Hi, welcome to our third lesson on Bootstrap Algebra. We're actually going to get to start uh, typing into a computer programming environment today. So let's jump in. Um, let's make sure we're set up. So at the Bootstrap Org page, Courses, Algebra, Latest Version. Before we open our order of operations, let's jump back to um, last week and go over a little bit of what we did. We talked about the coordinate system um, and how those numbers represented by the coordinate system can be used in the game. And then we also talked about your game. You had a, uh, an assignment to brainstorm your game, to go ahead and make some uh, art assets for your game. So hopefully you have a screenshot of your game um, that you can use to think about how your game's going to work, to talk with your partner and talk with other people about that. So um, hope you had fun doing that. That's always a fun part of designing a game, of developing a game is to, to get that design document started. And now, because you're not uh, uh, programmers yet, or at least with the environment we're going to use, we need to take a little side trip and um, talk about a programming environment and some other concepts that you're going to need to take your vision and get it going as a game. So let's look at order of operations. We have plenty of materials that we'll go through, but let's go through the, we'll go through the lesson slides. Um, also make sure that you are set up in We Scheme. Go ahead and hit My Programs. Should see this, and this time we won't start NinjaCat, but we'll actually hit Start a New Program. So make sure your We Scheme is set up with Start a New Program, and we'll come back and talk about this uh, area later. In fact, we're going to start. We're going to talk about it right now. So, when we move from one side to the other of this panel, we see this left-hand side. We see the word "definition" show up in gray down here, over top of this logo. And when I slide over, we see the word "interactions" start here. This bar here in the middle, we can slide left. We can slide right. On the definitions area, we could type code, and we'll learn what to put in there. Today, we're going to stay over on the interactions area. If you'll notice this little um, greater than sign here, we'll call that the prompt. And uh, in, in, in general, the term for this is REPL, R-E-P-L, read, eval, print, loop. So when I type something here, like a number, it reads that, it evaluates it, and then it prints something out. So we'll talk a little bit more about what it actually did. But if you ever hear anybody talk about a REPL, hear me mention REPL, that's what we're talking about is that acronym R-E-P-L for Read, Eval, Print, Loop. Toolbar at the top. Let's look at that. Ah. So when we're running programs, we'll have a project name. We'll have a project, so your game will be a project. We'll be able to run. You'll see as we go through today, it's a little bit of a pain to, to type everything here at the REPL. So we'll want to, to make a game file, and that's what we'll go over here. We can run that. We can stop it. We can save it. We can share it with somebody. We can import images, and we're going to learn through this uh, course about something called a code recipe and this recipe button will put the template for our recipe over here all right so you go ahead get set up that way let's look at page eight in our workbook so we'll go over to materials notice and wonder page eight and it gives some examples of what you can do on that side. Um, so you go ahead in just a minute um, and do this section. And then um, I'm going to work through it myself. But for now, why don't you pause here and uh, start working on page 8 by typing into 
the interactions area on Wii Scheme. So go ahead and pause. Okay, how did that go? Let's let's do a few of the things that are listed here that hopefully you did. So I typed in a one, and it gave me back a one. Um, they talked about fractions, so let's look at that. So there's a fraction. Notice that it's not a division. So we're not doing the division operation. We're actually entering a fraction because if we do three space slash two, we get something completely different. So we'll come back to what, what happened there, but we didn't get the fraction three halves. In fact, it represented that as 1.5, but if you click on this 1.5, you'll see that it turns into three halves. So that's just the printed representation of something internal going on in, inside Wii Scheme, and um, that fraction, that re, that um, rational number representation, if you remember a rational number is um, uh, a number that can have, be represented as a fraction. Um, so that uh, can have multiple representations. So let's, we can do a, a big one like, uh, or a different one anyway, 22.7. It's got a repeating decimal which if you remember is represented by this bar over these. So that's 3.1428757142857. That repeats forever. But when I click on it, then it's got its rational representation. What else did they ask us to do? Small, big, let's do something really big. No, 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 no. Did you guys probably do this? You probably did. That's what I did. Okay, and it looks like it's, it's going to try to represent that. We don't. Uh, if there's a really big one, we don't know what it is. What if we do point zero, 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 one? Okay, didn't have any problem with that. What if we did one divided by? No, 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 no. Didn't have any. Ah, interesting. It didn't print that all the way. It just went dot dot dot. So it looks like there's some kind of. So oh, it did that up here too, I just didn't notice. But when I click on it, ah, it did give it one over all those nines. Same with that one. It gave it one over that all those zeros because um, uh, decimal with all of those zeros. Interesting. Negative numbers. Yep, looks like those, those work. Uh, anything else from page eight? So hopefully you got to see all those. Uh, let's see, did you run into any um, errors? Like what if you put high? Hmm. All right. This variable, we don't know what a variable is, but we'll learn that soon. So high, whatever it is, is not defined. Okay, well that makes sense because we didn't do anything. Um, what about 0 0.5? That's good. What about 0 0.005? Um, That's Good. It's a number. All those look like numbers, so it um, looks like those are going to work. All right. Let's see what the next thing for us is. So hopefully you tried to add, subtract, multiply. Um, so um, divide numbers. Let's see. Yeah, let's let's try to do some of those things. Let's let's see. Let's add three plus four, the normal way we would. Well, I don't see anything in red. It doesn't look like an error. It just looks like you did four, three things. There's the number three. Here's something I don't understand. And here's the number four. So it looks like it did three things. One, two, three. Well, what if we do three plus four, like with no spaces? That is some kind of error. This variable is not defined. So it looks like it took this three plus four, tried to evaluate it as a variable, as a thing, you know, just like the word high up here, and it couldn't do that. So that must not be how we add, subtract, multiply, divide numbers. So we'll learn more about that in this lesson. If you remember from algebra, pre-algebra, this over here, P-E-M-D-A-S, PEMDAS, order of operations. So math is a language, and just like all languages, it has rules for grammar. So the rule is we always evaluate multiplication before addition. 
And that's what this pyramid is showing. If you remember that, we first evaluate anything inside of parentheses. Then we do exponents or square roots or, you know, roots. Then we do multiplication and division. Then we do multiplication and division. Then we do um, addition and subtraction. And that's what this is saying. We evaluate multiplication before addition because, or, or represented by, it's higher on this pyramid. Why is it like that? Because somebody decided it. There's a lot in math, just like in any area of study, that we'll call the word arbitrary. It just means somebody made it up. It's one thing when we talk about math, it's really hard to separate out the things that are necessary parts of math and the things that are there just because somebody said that's the way we're going to do it. So order of operations is one of those things that we represent it a certain way when we write it down because somebody decided it. It's arbitrary. And what we're going to learn is, um, uh, well, for, for, for one thing, in math, it also can be um, ambiguous. So there may be more than one meaning when you write something down. That's why we need rules like PEMDAS to try to take the ambiguity away. In computers, we can't have any ambiguity. It has to always be the same way. So in computer languages, there are specific rules about how evaluation happens, and we're going to learn about one that's used by the WeScheme environment. So we're going to practice this rule with something called the circle of evaluation. So we're not going to use the PEMDAS rules. We're going to map out a path to answer every kind of arithmetic problem. So here's the rules for circles of evaluation. You ready? One, every circle must have one and only one function written at the top. So if we see this, here's the function. It's a plus. Two, the inputs to the function are left to right in the middle of the circle, 3 and 8. So we'll say plus 3, 8. That's it. Those are the only rules. We can do any, any, any arithmetic problem only by following those two rules. And we're going to practice that a lot because it's different than uh, the PEMDAS order of operations. But once you see how clearly this maps to the We Scheme code, I'm thinking you'll really like it. All right, so let's look at a, a math expression, 6 divided by 3. Here is a circle of evaluation, the function. So when we look at these three symbols, 6 divided 3, one of those is a function, and it goes at the top. Um, we use the slash instead of the divided by character, because we don't, we don't, it, it's hard to type that on your, your keyboard, right? You don't have a, a key for that, so you'd have to do something weird on the keyboard. And we do have a slash, so we'll use slash. So the slash goes at the top. The 6 goes first, because it's left to right, and the 3 goes second. And now we can easily turn that into code. Um, one way to think about it is to have... Uh, Pac-Man or a monster or a spider that's going to eat through this circle of evaluation. And it's always going to, just like the two rules, start at the top and then go left to right. And when it crosses a circle, we're going to put a paren. So if it enters a circle, we're going to do an open paren. When it exits a circle, we're going to do a closed paren. So this spider is going to come from the top. He crosses the circle, so we put an open paren. He gets to the function, so that's the slash. We put a slash. The monster doesn't care anything about this line, so nothing happens. And then it goes left to right, 6, then 3. Then he goes out of the circle, so it crosses the line, and we put a close parent. And that's it. Again, we can take any math expression, turn it into a circle of value, to, to multiple circles of evaluation, and easily turn that into code. So let's do one that's a little, little harder. In the PEMDAS system, we have to jump around 
right? And you may be so used to that, you don't even remember, you know, notice that you're doing it. But you are, you're not going left to right, you're, um, you're following PEMDAS, right? So the first thing we do is what's in the parentheses. Then we can go left to right. So in order to write that as a circle of evaluation, we have a circle for what's here, and that goes here. So that's the inner circle. And at the top of that is the operation is the function which is plus, then left to right. And then the outer circle is the division function. Six uh, goes on the outside is the left, and then the right hand side is this circle. So when we think about code, we're gonna have coming from the top open paren slash. Then the next thing is the six. Then the next thing is going to be a paren. And then the next is starting from the top. We have the plus one and two. And then we go out of this circle. So we'll close that paren out of this circle and close that paren. So let's see if we did that right. All right. See how that follows. Again, we cross the circle. We did the slash. We do the six. We cross another circle, so we do an open paren, plus, left to right, one, two. We go out of a circle and out of a circle, so we got two slashes, or two closing parens. So, um, these slides are for, uh, you know, a big class. I don't think we need to do navigators and drivers. I think you and your partner can um, can go ahead and work on some of these examples. So let's start with page nine. So page nine. Here are some circles of evaluation. Think about how what these mathematical expressions mean, right? We don't have any p parens. So uh, we do have this division, but represented as a fraction. So that makes it pretty easy to remember that those go first together, right? So where is this going to go inside here? Right? See this division? So you're just going to fill in the missing part. Sometimes you'll be missing a function. Sometimes you'll be missing a number. So pause the video now and go ahead with your partner. Work together on... Um, completing this page five. If you don't want to print this out, um, you can just write your own, draw your own circle um, for each of these expressions. Just write down the expression and then draw some circles and uh, go ahead and fill this in. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Great. Hopefully you finished that. Just like with most arithmetic things, the way they make things harder is just to make them more complex, and hopefully you can start to appreciate how um, circles of evaluation give you a very specific way to approach these problems. And we'll see in the next worksheet um, how those can easily be translated to code. So let's do that. Let's look at, uh, let's see if it's the next one. Nope, we're going to practice circles of evaluation more. So in the last one, you did um, circles of evaluation filling in the blank. In this one, which again, it's not, it's only uh, four problems. You have to do all the circles your, yourself from scratch. So go ahead, pause the video, and work these four problems, making a circles of evaluation from each of these math expressions. Go ahead and pause. Great. Hopefully you're getting the hang of that. We got more, more, more practice because it's all about practice to really get this um, into your brain and it's going to really translate into uh, code much uh, easier. It's just something we got to practice. All right. And the next one, which is um, page 11, we're matching. It's just a matching. 
Um, so again, that's why we're doing these as part of this video, because these are set up to be pretty quick. Um, so it's a matching exercise. There's only five things to match. Each of these circles of evaluation on the left should match to only one of the arithmetic expressions uh, on the left. So some of those you'll be able to see, like, you know, this one has a lot of inner circles. So it probably is not this one. Right, so use your your skills in matching uh, uh, tests to eliminate, and then figure out which one, uh, which circle evaluation goes with which expression. Go ahead and pause the video now and work these problems. Okay, great. Um, now um, I'm going to work a few uh, circles of evaluation into code. So. Your assignment for uh, before our next meeting is to keep practicing. Um, there's many more practices for circles, creating circles of evaluation from arithmetic expressions. Do these. None of them are long. Go ahead and do all of these optional and the translating circles of evaluation to code. So everything we didn't do together on this go ahead and do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and from some of these, uh, now let's do let's do nope, I need some completed circles of evaluation. So let's do these. Uh, because the circles are already here. And uh, we'll just talk about what you put in for these. So let's see. What goes down here on the division with 5? That's going to be the 10. The operation for this 4 and 2 is going to be the plus. That leaves the minus for up here. So you already have written down a minus here, a plus here, and a 10 here. Now let's turn that into a circle of into code. So... We're going to come through and we're going to have an opening paren, and the first function we're going to hit is this minus at the top. So let's go ahead and write that in. We have an opening paren and a minus at the top, and then we're going to hit the opening paren crossing this circle, and that's got a plus in it if you look at yours. So we have another open and a plus. And then going left to right, we have 4 and 2, and a close. 4, 2, close. And I'm just making another space because I know, I know something else is coming. All right, I'm going to have to open something else and then have a divided by. So I'm going to open another one. And if you notice, when I hit open, it automatically puts a close. So it puts me inside of a circle. You see that there? So as you practice more, you'll see that um, I don't have to type the right-hand paren. I only need to type the opening ones, and it does what's called balancing or paren matching so that when I type an open, it automatically types a close so that I'm ready to uh, type in that circle. All right, that was the open for the last one. The last one has a divided by and then 10 and 5. So divided by 10 and five and it already closed that for me it closed the other one for me so I came out two and that's correct right I had to come out two more circles to get out and then I can execute that all right let's do one more and then look at some errors so with this one we have plus um, what goes here with the seven and the one it's going to be that minus What's going to be multiplied? That's going to be the 5 and the 8. So you already have that written down. Um, but I'm going to crawl through these. So I'm going to open, plus, open, open. You'll see that it completed the circle for me. Plus, space. I'm going to open again. All right, so now I'm in this, this circle where you have the minus 7 and 1. Minus 7, 1. I'm just going to use my right arrow to go outside that circle. I'm going to put a space just so I have it there. It won't be an error if you don't. All right, now I'm going to have another circle open. And then we've got times 5, 8. 
times 5, 8. And I, I don't even have to, to, to do the arrow. I can just hit Enter, and it gives me the answer. All right, let's uh, see what kind of errors you might run into as you work through these. Um, here is something super useful. Um, I'm hitting my up arrow now, and nothing's happening. But if I want to get to this thing, if I click up here and hit Enter, does anything happen? Nope, nothing happens. So at the REPL is the only place I can type. If I want to repeat what was here, I can hit my Alt key and up arrow. So I can hold the Alt key, hit up arrow, and that takes me back through my history. Down arrow takes me back backwards through my history. Does that make sense? So I can use up arrow and down arrow while holding down the Alt key to get what was there before. So I'm going to go up one. So here's my last thing. What if I had not put in a space here? Is that okay? Yes, that's still okay. Alt up. So none of these spaces matter. That's one thing about the Wii Scheme language is that because the symbols and parentheses are keeping track of things, we don't have to have those spaces, but I'm going to hit up three times because that's my space version, and I like that. So that's just my preference, um, that I like these spaces right here. What if we had left out this paren? What's that going to look like? Ah, do you see that? It actually made, it jump down to the next line because it wasn't closed. So when that happens to you, you'll see, and I'm going to hit enter a couple more times. See, it just keeps pushing it down the screen. I'm having to scroll down to get it. So I'm going to backspace and see what happens. Okay, so it's I'm going over those. So it, it, it indented it when I hit enter, but then it didn't. So I'm going to try to fix it back to there. So if I hit enter there and I thought it should have been a close, I can just write a close there. Or I can go back up to this line and write a close and then hit enter, and then it gives me the answer. So now all that stuff. So let's see, what if I forgot this times function call expected function given five well according to our rule the first thing after an opening parenthesis is supposed to be the function right because that's the top part that's one of the rules it has to have a function first well since I have a space here which doesn't count it looks like I tried to make five the function and that's what it said hey I'm trying to make a function call I expected a function, but you gave me a 5, which is not a function. So I'm going to go up arrow, up, oops, I'm going to come back down to my line, up arrow, up arrow, nope, up arrow once, I'm just trying to find, there, okay, there's a good one again, I'm going to hit enter, make sure it's a good one, yep, alt, up arrow, what else, what if we took away this 1, interesting. Because we can have something called negative 7, right? So that's not an error. So minus 7 is okay. What about, um, what if we left out that? What about star, so, so multiply 5 or 5? Also okay. So be careful when you... Um, when you're typing these in, that you're getting the answer that you would expect from going through PEMDAS. And it's fine if you want to type this into a calculator or some other system to verify you know, that you're getting the right answers, um, uh, the answers that you expect. Uh, but don't forget that if you do something like this, then it's up to you to type that into the calculator correctly because a lot of calculators, if you just do 7 minus 1 plus 5 times 8, you will get, you, they'll do them left to right, right? So you'll get 7 minus 1 is 6, plus 5 is 11, times 8 is 88, and that would be the wrong answer. So you'll have, you have to put the parentheses in yourself or do it correctly in the calculators yourself to get 5 times 8, which is 40, plus 7 minus 1, which is 6, is that right? been getting no, 46 is what we've been getting uh, let's get back to there right what did I say 40 plus 6 that was the had multiplication in my head right so 5 times 8 is 40 7 minus 1 is 6 6 plus 40 is 46 and that's what we get out of here also so 
there's plenty of practice through all of these materials and um, really want you before the next meeting to go through all of the worksheets that we haven't done uh, practice drawing out circles of evaluation taking those from circles of evaluation into racket code uh, to make sure that you really understand um, how to do those operations because we're going to use this code and these numbers which we're right we're gonna we're gonna make those part of the coordinate system for your game so that you can control the players in your game control the elements the images in your game um, and uh, we're going to do many more functions other than just arithmetic. So we're just starting off with arithmetic as uh, an easy example of being able to code stuff in Wii Scheme, but we're actually going to start working with stars and rectangles and uh, sentences and all kinds of things other than just arithmetic very, very soon. In fact, I believe the next lesson. So let's see what let's see if we if we hit everything. Um, the goals for you: you can write circles of evaluation, translate circles of evaluation into code, use numbers and operation in a programming environment. So don't overlook the big thing that you did, which is understanding this new programming environment. Error messages, you will see plenty of them. And that's one reason I love Wii Scheme is they spend many, 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 many years figuring out um, by teaching thousands of students um, these uh, programming concepts and they figure out the best way to um, talk about these errors so that you can um, use those to um, to learn in this environment. We talked about circle evaluation, the definitions area. Um, editor, so um, we didn't use, we, we talked about definitions. Another word for what's going on on this side is a code editor. So we're gonna, just like you may um, think of Microsoft Word as a, uh, an editor for text, this is an editor specifically for Wii Scheme code. Error messages you're going to see a bunch of expressions um, are the individual things that we're going to put onto the line in the REPL. It's going to be an expression. We'll get more uh, precise about the definition of an expression, and we'll talk about that term more later. Function it's a mathematical object that consumes input and produces output. We're going to, again, talk more about specifics about functions uh, later. Interactions area. Value, I didn't mention, but a specific piece of data that is not a function um, uh, is a value. So when we, seven is a value, there's other types of values that we'll also talk about later. So you have plenty of work to do to really get these circles of evaluation. Um, as something that is just second nature of how you're going to think about um, arithmetic. Um, but like I said, we're going to expand out the notion of what we can code much, much farther beyond just plain arithmetic um, in the next couple of lessons. Let's make sure, I believe we're done with our slides. Yeah, well, we looked at does spaces matter? We talked about that. Um, we talked about uh, the order of things and using parentheses to control that, and we talked about error messages. So I think we're good with that. I'll see you next time.